this video I want to discuss the proper way, and I'm going to emphasize proper way, to replace a battery in one of these newer computer control cars. Uh, I would say uh, beginning about 1996 and particularly after the year 2000, uh, these cars got more and more sophisticated and when you go to change a battery, you do not, and I'm going to repeat, you do not want to just unhook the old battery and take it out and install a new battery. And you're saying, well, why not? Well, guess what happens? Particularly on my car here, which is very complex and has tons of computers, I'm going to lose a lot of computer memory and I'm going to lose a lot of presets and I'm going to have uh, warning lights on, I'm going to have to reset my climate control, my windows, my sunroof, and on and on it goes. You know, I, I think, I don't know why they don't do this, but there should be a warning literally there should be a warning tag in these newer cars that say do not unhook the battery without an external power supply protecting your computer while you're in the process of changing the battery okay so I'm going to talk about how there's a couple different ways you can do this uh, I tell you it, it it's not only safe it it's so much easier because when you're done with the battery change you just get and start your car nothing needs to be messed with nothing needs to be reset as far as some of those computer controlled gizmos I should call them in, in your particular car but before we before we get into that I want to give a little pitch here to my my favorite batteries and you're looking at uh, this is an AGM battery okay and in, in fact I am so impressed with this new generation of batteries I don't buy old lead acid batteries anymore. I know they're expensive, but in the long run they're cheaper, particularly on the newer cars. If you ever get stuck somewhere, and, uh, and particularly don't let anybody jump your, your newer car, you know, with a dead battery. And so this battery will help prevent some of that. And I'll explain a little bit more about that as we go along. But originally I became enamored with these batteries, I think probably, you know, over 15 years ago when the old Optima battery came out. A lot of you will recognize this battery right here. This is the yellow top Optima. And, uh, you know, they also have a red top Optima. And I used to put these batteries in my Mercedes diesels because they had more oomph. They would last a lot longer and they would not corrode. That's right. Because there's no liquid acid in the battery, they don't gas off, all right? And you don't get that typical corrosion around the battery posts that you see with all these other lead acid batteries. So not only do you have more power, in fact, I've, I've left my headlights on for a couple hours with one of these batteries and been able to come back and start the car. Well, this was a problem, you know, 15 years ago, because Optima was kind of the, the only thing in the marketplace, and they're kind of funky looking batteries you can see here. It, it, it didn't quite fit in the battery tray and you had to get an extra ground cable length and mess around to get it to work. But now, I tell you, things have changed. Most manufacturers are producing exact fit AGM batteries. And AGM means absorbent glass mat. So there is actually an absorbent glass mat inside this battery. And uh, look at this. This one here is the exact dimensions of my Mercedes battery. There are a number, like I say, there's, there's a number of manufacturers, all the mainstream manufacturers now are making AGM batteries that will fit into many, many models of different cars. So now you know, now you know about my favorite batteries and I'm gonna be installing a brand new AGM battery in this S500 and we're gonna do it so that we don't lose power to the computers. Let me explain more. Let me begin by explaining the process in a nutshell, okay? Basically, you do not want to let 12 volt power leave those two cables, the two battery cables, when you remove it from the old battery and install it on the new battery. Now that can be a little challenging. Uh, particularly if you're trying to get the cables off and you've got these clamps on the cables and you bump one off, then, you know, all is lost, okay? <laughs> you can use a booster like you see here, okay? And you can clamp, you have to clamp the battery posts and then you have to, you know, make sure this is turned on, by the way, and then you remove the two battery posts and you have to put the new battery on. You have to be a little careful and let me show you why now, why you have to be so careful when you do this. 
Okay, I've set the booster here in the trunk. I'm, I'm sure it's turned on. And if you notice here, when I go off to the, the positive uh, cable here, I've got plenty of room to grab onto that. Now that looks pretty safe to me. I should be able to take off that, that loosen that nut on the clamp and get this off without knocking this clamp off. But look at over here on the negative one. There's really no good place to clamp on to this cable end. I can get this nut off okay, but I'm going to have to be really careful. And that's the disadvantage of doing it this way. So you can see the challenge when using a booster. You could also use another car battery and some jumper cables. And that, that's even a little more risky because all you have to do is knock one of those cables off or one of those clamps off and all is lost. You've just lost all power to the com computer, so even if it's only for just, just a second, okay? But once again, in review, what you're going to try to do is keep power to the main computers at all times when you are removing the old battery and installing the new battery. Okay, okay you, I hope that's clear. That means if you, get, if you get a battery or a booster, put on those two cables when you remove them and put them back on at no time. At no time has the computer system in the car lost voltage. Now there's another way to do it, okay? This is the simpler way. Um, and it, it's really not that expensive, and that's to buy a couple of adapters. If, if you look at this here, this is a, a plug, a common plug on the OBD2 code reader uh, in all the cars, 1996 and newer. And I have an adapter that's got two clamps that I can hook up to a battery or a booster. So what you do is you just go in and, and plug this in to the OBD2 port under the dash of your car and just hook this up to another battery or hook it up to the booster, then you can come back here and work on the cables and remove the battery and put the other battery in and hook it all back up. And then when you're all done, all you need to do is go up there and unplug this and you're ready to go. And that's what I'm going to do in this case. I don't, I don't particularly think I need to show you, you know, uh, uh, how that's done. It's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, when I get done with this process, I will come back and actually show you the installation of the new battery. The purpose of this uh, video is not to show you how to take the clamps off and, and remove the cables. But that's, that's pretty easy. The important thing is, remember, keep 12 volts to those computers at all times. And I should, in closing here, I should mention that do not use a battery charger. Some people think, well, what if I just hook up a battery charger to those two cables and then I remove them and I can swap out batteries? That is very, very dangerous and you could destroy some of your very expensive computer equipment because a battery charger will surge voltage well beyond 16 volts. And that's when those computers are going to be very sorry and you're going to be sorry as well. So no battery charger in this process. You can use a 12 volt battery, you can use a booster, or you can uh, get one of these. These are readily available on the internet. Uh, just uh, uh, this is called the, look at that. This is called the Solar Memory Saver Cord, okay? This is what's going to save the memory, the car's memory. And that's what we're talking about in this video. So I hope you found that helpful. Be sure and check out my other videos in this series on automotive batteries. Well, you can see I've installed the new AGM battery. Uh, once again, you want to make sure, I've said this in a lot of my other videos, you want to make sure those battery clamps are tight. Just because the nuts are tight, that doesn't mean the clamps are tight. You want to tighten those clamps, wiggle them, make sure they're tight. That's done. We've unhooked the memory saver and we're ready to give it a try. This is going to be the test right here. If this car starts up and you see ABS lights and uh, SRS and and BAS lights flashing, you know you didn't do it right, but here we go. Let's see what happens. Look at how that starts. Look at the power in that. Look at that. And look at that. No warning lights. They're all off. Success. So that's the proper way to change a battery on one of these newer cars.